Games are expensive, that is no secret. But in the last couple of years, more and more AAA franchises are jumping from costing 60 bucks to 70 and sometimes even 80 bucks. And there are a couple of reasons I think this is justified. From 2006 onwards, AAA games were consistently priced 60 bucks. Sure, there were the odd ones out that did cost more than 60, but these were generally special editions, which weren't that special. Most of the time, it would be the game with previously released DLC included. But these costed more because, yeah, you got the DLC as well. But in 2020, the first signs of a price increase became clear, when multiple companies made it clear that games were gonna jump from 60 to 70 bucks. Even though most games released in 2020 still cost 60. It was almost definitely because of the jump to the ninth generation, with more powerful hardware, and maybe because of other reasons 2020 is infamous for. In 2021, we saw the first few games releasing with this new price tag, and this became a mainstream in 2022 and 2023 as well, to the point that most AAA games these days are 70 bucks. But weirdly enough, Nintendo didn't join in on the fun. I guess they were too busy charging full price for 10 year old games, even though Nintendo does like money. But after the second trailer of Tears of the Kingdom, the game became available for pre-order that day. And... No. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Even though here in Europe Breath of the Wild was already priced 70 euros. But nowadays, it feels like companies are charging whatever the heck they want these days. To the point that GTA 6 is rumored to be more than 100 bucks. And the thing is, games are becoming bigger and bigger by the year. So having a budget of over 1 million dollars, I think it's fair that some games are priced a little higher. But then there are also cases like FIFA. Oh sorry, my bad. EA Sports FC 24 where the game might look a little better but let's be real for a second it's the same game as last year and they still increase the price well there might be another reason for the price increase and it's a word that you can scare most of humanity with <laughs> inflation see inflation is this funny thing that happens to money because there is too much of it to dumb it down you see this piece of paper it is one of a kind, so the value could be pretty high. I wish. But if you have, say, 20 of these laying around, the value drops, and that is exactly what is happening to money since it was introduced. And if we look up how much $70 in 2024 was in 2018, oh, would you look at that? Almost the exact same price you would pay for a new AAA game in 2018. People are underestimating the fact that game prices are going up, because the worth of money is going down. So even though you pay 70 bucks for a game now, you would have paid 60 bucks for it in 2018 anyways. And I wish we could end it there, but the thing that is sparking the most debate is that companies are re-releasing their games at a full 70 bucks, even though they originally retailed at 60. Most people flag Nintendo for doing this, but don't be deceived, other companies have been guilty of doing this as well. Sure, Skyward Sword HD retailed for 50 bucks in 2011, Give me one second. Yep, makes total sense. But Resident Evil 4 and The Last of Us Part 1 Remastered are just as guilty of doing this as Nintendo. In the end, games costing 70 bucks is just something we have to live with. It's not like Ubisoft isn't gonna price the next Assassin's Creed 60 bucks again, because 70 is just the new standard. But in my opinion, whatever a game is worth is up to the consumer. For now, we can conclude that game prices never actually increased it's more so the value of money that has decreased and if you look back at the history of game prices they were quite expensive back in the day like an nes game costing 100 bucks jesus christ but with that said thank you for watching and i'll see you next time